Hello and welcome to Let's Invest, a show for amateur focus investors. Today we're going to be going over the top 15 cryptocurrencies as of the second or the 28th of February 2017 and uh, discussing a little bit about each one for I guess new investors or people new to the crypto world and um, just giving a general overview because I made a video called the top 15 uh, cryptocurrencies evaluated in, in 20 minutes before and I thought it was pretty terrible when I went back and watched it again so I plan on uh, making it a lot better this time so with that said I'm gonna go ahead and give you a brief history of my involvement in the crypto I don't know the crypto community and um, that way it'll, you'll get a little bit of credibility as to what I'm about to say. I am invested in Bitcoin, have been for a while. I'm invested lightly in Ethereum, have been for a while. I've invested the most heavily of them all in Dash with probably about 40% of my por portfolio in, that in, uh, in Dash. My crypto portfolio anyway. Ripple, never used it. Litecoin, I have about 20 Litecoin. Um, Monero, I just got the GIU or GUI wallet and I am about to buy one Monero. Um, Ethereum Classic, never used it, just like Ripple. Made Safe Coin, I have it on my computer and uh, I've tried to use it. NIM, I have the wallet right here. Oh, wait, no, that's Augur. Where is it at? Yep, NIM, I've got 31 XEM in my wallet. Um, Augur, I have an Augur account. Economy, I've looked into it, Zcash looked into it, Factum looked into it, Tether looked into it, and Steam. I have an account on Steam. I should probably open that up, um, yeah, before I get into that, which I haven't done yet. So, my first one I'm going to talk about is Bitcoin. So, what is Bitcoin? Well, if we go to my chart here, Bitcoin, its only purpose is to be used as a currency. Um, the scalability and I, these, these um, I don't know points I have highlighted: the function, scalability, transaction speed, and block time. Major selling points, and major negatives. Those are the things that I think everyone should pretty much know about. Those are my, I don't know. Those are the beginner things that people should know about. <laughs> uh, okay, so because not everything is going to be used as a currency. Ethereum is used to build applications and things like that. Anyway, so its main goal is to be as a currency. Right now it's pretty laggy because um, it is uh, not very scalable and transaction speed is uh, about, it's a few minutes when I go to my Electrum wallet and use it um, to send Bitcoin to myself, say I buy some Bitcoin sometimes it takes five minutes to get a confirmation and sometimes it takes five minutes to, for it to even show up unconfirmed and sometimes it takes hours for it to get a confirmation if the network is running slowly that's just not acceptable um, so I'm not really heavily invested in Bitcoin because I think it's becoming obsolete the only major selling point I see of it right now is name brand and it's the most known coin and most accepted so far um, Major negatives is obviously the scalability issue, which I don't think will be solved by SegWit. I don't think SegWit will be um, implemented, at least during this round of voting. Um, speed issues caused by the bogging down of the network, and it only has one function, and that's being a currency. Um, enough said there. Everyone knows what Bitcoin is. Ethereum. Um, Ethereum, its main point is, becoming, is being a currency, an application builder, and a smart contract, um, I don't know, a provider. Scalability is seemingly not an issue, although I'm not super informed on that. I just looked it up a little bit. It seems like they can, uh, if if things start getting kind of bogged down, they can vote or change it or something in some way to make it better. Um, and on top of that, it doesn't seem like it's going to be as big of an issue as Bitcoin is right now anyway. Transaction speed and block time, pretty fast and I can testify um, to this. It's normally pretty fast. The website says about 13 to 17 seconds, and 
I and I can say that's true most of the time, but I've seen it take over an hour for me to even get it into my Ethereum wallet. And I'll show you my Ethereum wallet right now. This is what it looks like. I've got you can see my balance, but I don't care because I don't have very much. 4.41 Ether. Um, yeah, it's pretty user friendly, but it's kind of confusing. I've never even known how to use the contract thing, uh, and it's it's more confusing than it has to be. But uh, I guess it's because it's not its main goal is to be a currency. I guess. Okay. So major major selling points, smart contracts, lots of applications built on Ethereum, and the major negatives are the old hard fork that it had. I think it might have had multiple, but it definitely had one. <laughs> that was uh, pretty pretty severe and um, the applications that I've used built on Ethereum don't freaking work um, like Augur I've tried to make Augur is built on Ethereum here's a, my account essentially and um, I yeah and I tried to make here's how, how, you, how you use it I'll get into this later but basically it didn't work very well um, Dash. Okay, so Dash is my favorite currency. I have a Dash wallet right here that I'm not going to open up because I don't want you to see my balance. Um, but I can tell you this so far. It's so far of all the cryptocurrencies I've ever used, it's the most user friendly. They have the best game plan and I like them the best in terms of, I don't know, in terms of potential to become um, adopted by a lot of people basically uh, and they're working every single day to make it happen and that's why I like them because I can see what they're doing they're coming out with new developments all the time they are keeping their people informed they've got great marketing etc so the main function is only a currency so far anyway um, scalability is great they can uh, pretty much vote to scale up in one day propose a solution have all the masternodes vote and they'll be good in like in literally one day whereas Bitcoin will take uh, more than a year it seems and um, transaction speed I can testify to this also it's instant as soon as I buy some dash it gets put straight into my wallet and then within 2.5 minutes it's confirmed and I can spend it that's awesome for buying things on a day-to-day -day basis you know buy a sandwich from the sandwich lady Next thing, it's uh, selling points are that it's fast, as I just said, and it has optional private send, and it's very user friendly. Um, yeah, so you can send private transactions as well, if you if you wish. The major negatives is that it had a uh, it has this ongoing controversy controversy where everyone likes to call it a scam because the first day it was really easy to mine, and uh, about a little under two million were mined in the first two days so everyone likes to call it a scam but to be honest you can watch my video on this and um, I don't prove it wrong or anything it was mined pretty heavily the first day but who really cares the lead creator is still with the currency and still doing great things for it so I don't think it's a scam at all and honestly even if he did own or even if he did mine a million in the first day he deserves to get paid for his contribution <laughs> so yeah I don't care ripple this is one that I'm not invested in and have probably done the least research of them all along with Ethereum classic um, so if I say wrong things on the eth Ethereum classic or ripple please forgive me uh, ripple is as I've as far as I can tell mostly for transferring money between banks and um, that's why if you look at ripple the volume is much lower than the top the other top uh, I guess five currencies up here because it's just not I don't know used that much and hopefully I'm not overlooking it um, but but yeah <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and go back um, as far as scalability I don't think it could possibly be an issue from what I've read so far but maybe I'm wrong and the transaction speed and block time three to five seconds supposedly which is pretty freaking good major selling points it's fast traceable so that no one steals your money and you don't know where it went or if you accidentally made a payment you can probably get it back low transaction fees and major negative is that it, it has a stigma that it's made only for banks and not private users 
I don't know if that's true. All right, moving on down to Litecoin. Here is a example of the Litecoin wallet. It's actually very simple to use, as you can see, but it looks kind of like it was made in Visual Basic back in 2008, but whatever. Um, it's it's pretty self-explanatory, and uh, I like it a lot better than Bitcoin, to be honest with you. Um, its main goal is to be used as a currency, same as Bitcoin, essentially, in terms of scalability, as far as I can tell. But SegWit will probably activate on Litecoin pretty soon. Not pretty soon, but within a few months. And thus, it, um, I don't know, it, it'll be a lot better than Bitcoin once SegWit gets adopted. Assuming it w does get adopted. It's already a lot better than Bitcoin in terms of transaction speed, which I can testify to this, is under a minute usually and definitely under 2.5 minute which which is the block time um, major selling points it fixes a lot of Bitcoin problems it's much faster hence the name Litecoin um, has much higher coin supply as you can see the coin supply is about four times the size of Bitcoin meaning that um, if it got super popular I don't know it's just more work with the bull numbers in my opinion um, so you're not buying a sandwich for 0 0.0000001, you're buying it for 0 0.0001 uh, Litecoin. So, whatever. And it seems more scalable than Bitcoin because segment, SegWit will probably be adopted. Um, it'll probably be adopted because it only takes 75% of miners to um, start using SegWit for it to get adopted, and it takes 95% of miners on the Bitcoin network to get adopted. The only problem with it is that the name sounds like a ripoff of Bitcoin, so I think people just kind of discredit it as a ripoff coin, and um, it doesn't really have any unique features to show off for itself. So, you know, it has fast transactions, but it's not in instant. It doesn't have private transactions like Monero, and it doesn't have a. It's it's kind of like just it's just kind of like Bitcoin 2.0. It's just not that. I don't know, special. Um, okay, so moving down to Monero. Monero, main use is to be a currency. The scalability is questionable, but probably better than Bitcoin in my uneducated opinion. It was very, very hard to get good, clear information on Monero, and that's why I've always been a skeptic of it, even though I like the idea of a coin that's purely private for, you know, those type of people. And um, the block time and transaction speed is uh, is supposedly under two minutes, supposedly under one minute, but um, I have not tested that. The things it has going for it and the selling points are that it's it's completely private and completely untraceable. And the things it has going or the things the negative parts of it is that also that it's untraceable. So um, you can have a transaction kind of get lost and also because this is kind of a sketchy feature. Um, I know people who use Monero think it's good, but people looking in from the, um, I don't know, government and things like that think that's pretty bad. Um, not to mention, it's not super user friendly. The wallet they have on their website is horrible, um, and it's not really targeting normal people as, I don't know, as the users. So. Here's the Monero GI or GUI wallet, which I think stands for Graphic User Interface Wallet. It's been, I mean, as you can see, I've been downloading the blockchain for about a week now, and I'm still waiting for that last little bit to get downloaded. But it seems like it's going to be pretty user-friendly once I get the uh, GU, GUI wallet working. But Monero, uh, I mean, I trust it a lot less than I trust Litecoin or Dash so far. Okay, moving down to Ethereum Classic, which uh, I just like to think of as old Ethereum. And this was the Ethereum before it had the, I guess, the legendary Ethereum hard fork. So it's used just like Ethereum. It's a currency, smart contracts, and more. Um, unchanging. Let's go to this real quick. So let's show you Ethereum Classic's website. I know I just cut off in the middle of the sentence. <clears throat> but as you can see, it's kind of going down over time, too, which I don't really like. 
So Ethereum Classic's website, pretty simple, but actually um, not geared toward the towards the normal person. So it gives me as a as a person who wants to use cryptocurrencies, um, you know, to buy things on Amazon. It's not geared towards me, so I just I'm not interested. Therefore, I don't think it has that big of a potential um, to become a mainstream type of currency like Dash or maybe Bitcoin or Litecoin do so far. So where was I? Um, scalability. I don't like scalability here. It's unchangeable. They kind of have this phrase on the Ethereum, yeah, immutable. So basically, it is going to be unchanged. That's something I don't like. Um, block time is 15 seconds, supposedly. I can't confirm that completely decentralized these are the selling points it's completely decentralized it's less wavering than ethereum i guess if you think that's a good thing and they say on the website the code is the law so um yeah i guess ethereum classic will never die i guess you can say but i don't think it's ever going to get big either it's never going to get fully adopted in my opinion and the negatives about it in my opinion are that the website is awful and it doesn't seem to market at all towards the average person. Moving down, made safe. So let's go back to the market caps, the crypto or coinmarketcap.com. Made safe, eighth on the list, with a market cap of 79 million. Just in case you got lost there a little bit. Okay, so I have on the made safe. I got made safe downloaded on my computer, and I have their test app on that that I'm not going to show you right now because I couldn't get it to work a minute ago but uh, their main thing is that it's kind of like a decentralized internet and application builder but the big thing I thought was I don't know maybe usable about it was to store documents securely as in hashes and the coins are used to pay people who prop up the network and stuff like that so uh, <clears throat> as far as scalability I really don't know They've they've been around for eight years and to be honest with you have not accomplished much, kind of like Bitcoin in my opinion, um, but they're just kind of confusing to me. As far as block time goes, I don't think this really matters because I think they issue you the coins. Um, yeah, I, I'm not really the one to be talking about made safe here, but uh, this information is pretty much right, and uh, it's. The thing it has going for it, in my opinion, is decentralized um, data storage and decentralized applications that uh, you use. <laughs> I don't, I don't really know. I mean, you can't use them yet, and it's been eight years, but whatever. That's why I don't really like it. And that's the negative I have here. It's eight years old and hasn't accomplished much. Their downloadable content on their website is pretty much unusable. And um, Nim, okay, so Nim is tenth in market cap. Yes, no, it's ninth in market cap. And uh, a NIM token, as I've said in previous videos, my my dream cryptocurrency would be like 10 billion tokens that are 10 billion coins. That way, if it ever got, I don't know, mainstream adoption or whatever ever happened, you wouldn't be buying a sandwich for 0 0.0000001 coin. You'd be buying it for like a nice round figure of one coin or 10 coins or whatever. So... I think the more that I research NIM, the more I like it. And so I downloaded the NIM wallet, went to Pollen or Polynex, bought myself 31 NIM. Nope, oh, that's not it. Bought myself 31 NIM just to test out the wallet. And all the claims they've ever said on their website were true. And uh, the only problem with their website is that it's very hard to understand for the normal Earthling. Um, but let me go back to right here. It seems like it's very scalable. It seems like, actually, to be honest with you, maybe even better than Dash. But the thing about it that kills it is the website is not made for people to... Let me just go to the website and show you. The website's impossible to understand. You'll see when I get there. It's not simple and laid out like this, where it has... where It's even harder than Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic says decentralized, mutable, unstoppable. It lays out its points of... Um, this is points of sale right there. Nim, look at all this crap. <laughs> I don't understand what any of this stuff means. And uh, 
yeah. Yeah, I don't understand what uh, their points of sale mean as soon as I look at the, at the website. They need to have their points of sale as, you know, almost instant um, confirmations, which is true. They had a very fast, like, it was like 10 seconds after I bought myself some uh, XEM and sent it to my Light Wallet. Um, yeah, they didn't have, like, you know, messaging, fast um, contracts and whatever else as their top three to five selling points on their website, and then uh, have all this other stuff kind of in the background for the nerds to look at. But uh, that's probably the only thing stopping NIM from being a, a bigger cryptocurrency than it is. That and the fact that it just seems like there's no marketing for it. I think that Dash is where it is because it has such great marketing. It's number three now. When I made my old video like a month and a half ago or a month ago, it was number seven. And it's moved up four places. Literally only because of their marketing. Because they've got pretty women on YouTube who put out videos every single week about how good Dash is. And, uh, yeah, if Nim could do that, I think they would be probably, you know, somewhere around here right now. They've been around for, let's see, a few years, I think. Yeah, since, um, since 2015, early 2015. So it's not like they have, it's not like they are a brand new currency that just needs to, you know, grow. But anyway, let me, let's, let's, let's skip Nim. All right, let's, let's get over talking about Nim. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's pretty good, as far as I can tell so far. Augur. So, Augur is number 10 on the list. Let's make sure I'm still recording. Yes, I am. Um, Augur is number 10 on the list at 50 million market cap. And to be honest with you, I think that is a completely, um, completely, I don't know, stupid number. <laughs> I think that the people who are hyping up Augur are hyping it up because it's built on Ethereum and they've never tried to use other apps using Ethereum but they just seem to be slow and not really working that well so what you're looking at right now is my Augur account and back in early January I believe I tried to make a I tried to create a new market and the market I tried to create was um, one as you can is was one where you could bet on who would win the Super Bowl either the Patriots or the Falcons I believe it was I don't even remember but uh but yeah you, I was gonna try to have people bet on who would win the Super Bowl but I try to make it it would sit there pending forever literally two days it sat on the background of my computer and I tried it multiple times and it just it never worked so Basically, what you can do on Augur is trade assets, and as you can see here, 20% of people think trade the pick. I don't know, whatever this is. Yeah, you can kind of see what you do on Augur. It's pretty interesting, but in my experience, it doesn't work very well, or it's just super slow. Um, and I actually have an account with, it's funded a little bit. Okay, moving on down. Let me get into here. Yeah, this crap doesn't really matter. Pretty user friendly and secure, yeah, built on Ethereum, yeah. So, economy. Let's go down here to economy, number 11. So, economy, in my opinion, is stupid. It's basically like a, um, uh, a cryptocurrency fund where the people at economy, you give them your money or you give them Bitcoin or something like that. Actually, you just buy into economy. And the people at economy buy into whatever cryptocurrency they think, uh, they think is good and you just kind of have like a diversified portfolio in cryptocurrency in my opinion that's freaking stupid I d even though I own a lot of cryptocurrencies I don't believe in di diversification like that um, that's why I own a lot of Dash because I love Dash and it's paid off very well for me because um, I believe in doing all my own homework as you should too and uh, yeah not trusting other people with my money so that's why on my on my list here I wrote crypto fund scalability dumb what was this yeah transaction time dumb 
because it doesn't really exist. Features going for it, I guess if you're lazy, that's okay, but to me, that's dumb. And the things it has going for it, it's dumb. So, moving on down to Zcash. Um, it's to be used as a currency. Scalability, I couldn't find any freaking information on this other than what I believe was just trolls who love Monero saying, oh, it's way worse than Bitcoin scalability, but I couldn't confirm that or whatever. Uh, moving on over, the, what was this? Yeah, the block time. No idea. I just heard, you know, probably Monero trolls because Zcash is kind of trying to be a competitor to Monero saying that it was awful, like slow and stuff like that. But I, I think it'd probably be better than Bitcoin. I think their website says it's fast, but it doesn't really specify. Um, as you can tell, I'm not exactly the best Zcash uh, advocate here. So anyway, or um, I don't know. Anyway, supposedly secure and untraceable. That's for the selling point. And in my opinion, it's not very unique, and that's the major uh, negative. So moving on down to Factum, which is number 13. So only got three to go. So Factum, I think, is pretty cool, although I haven't studied it a lot. It's basically um, a hashed, decentralized document protection and storage service. And I think you can make smart contracts of some kind with uh, involving those documents. So entire governments could use ha ha uh, Factum, in my opinion. They could use Factum to, uh, or hospitals or whatever. Um, they could use Factum to store their documents securely so that there isn't as much corruption and uh, changing of, I don't know, sensitive information. So, next one over, scalability. No issue as far as I can tell. I mean, the more people who have nodes, the more scalable it is, I would think. Um, moving on over to the speed, I don't think it matters really. It's just, it's not really that kind of currency. Moving on over to the points of sale. Yes, points of sale, you can store document documents forever with no risk of corruption. And the negatives, really, I've, I haven't tested it, and there's not a lot about it on, you know, Reddit and stuff like that, so negatives not really existing so far, other than maybe you could uh, make the argument that there's a lot of other services that kind of offer hash document protection. But, you know, I I'm, I'm willing to give it a chance. Steam. Okay, Steam, at first, I didn't like Steam. I thought it was kind of stupid how the... It, okay, so let me get into it first. It's an uncensored social media um, Reddit type website that um, basically pays you the more likes you get, the more Steam tokens they give you. And at first, I didn't like it. I visited it and I was like, well, so Steam is going to give me money for making good content, then I'm just going to convert that straight back into cash, like US dollars, and put it in my pocket. So, I don't really see that as sustainable, but let me look here real quick. Okay, Steam. Yeah, so apparently there isn't a cap on that yet. yet. So, it's, 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 I still kind of have that feeling about it, but... It seems like it's working better than what I thought yeah, at first. So I'm gonna give it, I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt there, and I think it's actually kind of a, a decent idea. Um, scalability seems good as far as I can tell. I don't see why how it could ever be, since I don't think its goals to be used as like a currency like Bitcoin or uh, Litecoin or Dash or um, NIM. I don't think it's gonna run into that problem ever. Uh, speed, no big deal for that same reason, and the the point of sale is that you get paid to post uh, whatever you want, no censor no censorship, no censorship, um, and it's very much like Reddit if you go and visit the website. And yes, I do have an account with Steam, and I probably have like 30 Steam to my name. Um, and uh, yeah, it rewards the it, it rewards the bettering of the site by quality posting basically. So that's kind of cool. Moving on down to Tether. Tether, in my opinion, is pretty dumb. 
it's tether is backed by United States dollars which in my last video I kind of debunked why this wouldn't be a very good thing to do for cryptocurrency and uh, my last video which I believe let's go and check it out was realistically assessing possibility of cryptocurrency mass adoption and in this video I kind of debunked why um, a cryptocurrency backed by a fiat currency is not a good idea because of inflation and you know it's not going to be accepted everywhere things like that so scalability um, they're pretty dumb if they don't make it really good but I'm not interested enough to look into that um, as far as I can tell people are saying that it's pretty fast and um, the selling points people oh yeah, it seems legit to people who don't trust cryptos so I guess if you don't trust a made-up currency then and you still want to have the benefits of decentralization you can go with tether but uh, you know I wouldn't recommend it so and here's why with my negatives Venmo already exists and they're not decentralized and they're not illegal and they charge a 3% fee so it's not that high and they're not even that popular so what makes me think tether is going to be popular mm, not very not very much anything and uh, the US dollar is subject to inflation and not everyone in the world accepts, accepts US dollars so uh, yeah not a big fan alright so let me zoom back in because I know some of you guys are probably going to be like we want to see the whole chart oh my goodness there's no way you're going to be able to see the whole chart to screenshot it I'll show you half and half so yeah there's half screenshot it right now I'll go down here to ethereum classic there's another half screenshot it right now and there's more screenshot it right now so anyway my top three favorite are definitely dash because of its marketing and because I mean <laughs> I've been a loyal dash uh, investor since before it had this big run up which I don't know whether or not that's gonna that's gonna last but I'm definitely looking forward to evolution so dash is my number one uh, but don't take my word for it please if you buy dash now and it goes to zero dollars tomorrow it's not my fault um, my next is to be honest with you probably NIM after looking at it today and today is the only day I did any research on it but I was just like you know what it's the top nine I need to look at it and uh, after doing a little more research and confirming that it actually works and it's very fast um, and it doesn't have the problem with you know maybe not being completely decentralized like Dash is I, uh, I'm starting to like NIM a lot especially because the big market cap thing so if only if only NIM could get some institutional investments <laughs> and some good marketing then I will invest heavily, heavily into NIM, um, or maybe even a maybe a better website. So yeah, Dash one, NIM two. You know, Bitcoin has to be three because I don't think Bitcoin's ever gonna die, even though it freaking sucks at scalability. Um, Litecoin and Monero are a close four and five, and eh, everything else is just kind of decent. The ones I hate the most, though, are Ethereum Classic, um, Economy, I don't like Tether that much, and I think everything else just needs to have its own chance. I really don't like Zcash either, uh, but I can't tell you exactly why, I just don't like it. So, with that said, um, please comment, write, subscribe. If I didn't get something exactly perfectly right, put it in the comments, but don't act like a troll. Just politely correct me. And I will try to politely correct myself if I make one of these videos again. Um, or I'll put it like as a little caption or something. Um, so yeah, comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks for watching. And let's invest.